Oh, we worship you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. You are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We bless you, God. We bless your name. We worship you. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of a praise. You are worthy of a praise. You are worthy of a praise. Cause I never seen any God like you. I've never seen any God like you. I've never seen any God like you. I've never seen any God like you. You are the way maker God. You are the Red Sea Divider. You are the lover of my soul. You are my giver of life. I've never seen any God like you. Father in heaven and the earth. Oh God, no one like you. Jesus, no one like you. I've never seen any God like you. I've never seen any God like you. I've never, 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 never seen. I've never seen any God like you. Oh God, we worship you. Oh, we give you praise. You are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. Oh, we worship you, your holy name tonight. Oh, Father, we bless you. We bless you. Open your mouth and give him the fruit of your lips. He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> there is none like you in heaven and the earth. There is none like you in heaven and the earth. Ooh. Your mercy is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. You who sits at the center of the circle of the universe, we bless your holy name. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, day and night. Father, we worship you, we bless you. There is none like you. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. I've never seen, I've never seen. Oh, I've searched and searched and searched. I searched all over the world. Father, no one like you. Father, no God like you. Hey, there's no king like you. There's no king like you. Oh, yeah. I've never seen any God like you. 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 You are my father. You are my best friend, oh God. You are my savior, you are my savior. My redeemer, my healer, you are. Lord, we worship you tonight. We bow before you tonight. Open your mouth and worship the King of glory. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless your holy name. There is none like you. In heaven on earth, there is none like you. You are glorious in holiness and you are fearful in praises. You are always doing wonders. Dependable God. Capable. Ever-present help in our times of need. You who loved us even before we knew ourselves. You who called us even before our mother conceived us. We bless your holy name. We worship you God. We worship you. There is none like you. None like you. Open your mouth. Give him praise tonight. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Because there is none like him. He made the stars in the sky. He knows them by name. Father we worship you. 
Lord, we honor you. It's by your grace, we are not, by your mercy, we are not consumed. Because your compassion faileth not. Lord, we bless your holy name. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Father, we honor you tonight. We honor you tonight. We bless you. We bless you. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. For there is none like you. There is none compared to you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Father, Father. Father, Father. I adore you. Savior, 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 I adore you. Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. Be thou highly exalted, Lord. Be thou highly exalted. Be thou highly exalted, Lord. Be thou highly exalted. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Almighty Father. Be thou highly exalted. Father, you are faithful. You are loving. We worship you. You are merciful. You are dependable. You are caring. You are loving. You are loyal. There is none like you. Your majesty, our supremacy, we bless your holy name. You who created time, stepped out of time just to control time, we worship your holy name. We bless you, we bless your holy name. Be thou highly exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus we have worshipped. We bless you, Father, we've come before you again. We've come to learn at your throne. Lord, help us, O God. Help us to understand. Help us to hear what you have to say to us this evening. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, make the mouth of your servant the pen of a ready writer. That he will speak only that which he, he receives from you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, teach us, O Lord. Teach us, O Lord. Teach us. And may the words that we hear tonight never ever stand against us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your holy name. We worship you. Be thou highly exalted, God. Be thou highly exalted. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your holy name. We bless you, Lord. We adore your King of Kings. Yes, Lord, we do. We bless your name, oh God. We bless you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how we love calling your name. And every day, your name is the same. Thank you, Jesus. Libra da Capasata Lagade. Lera Rabo Kisa Tala Rabo Sita. Spirit of the Living God will bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Today is another beautiful day in God's presence, and we're going to be looking at a topic today that says rebuilding parents, children bridges, right? Uh, this is one of the fundamental problems we find in our society today, uh, basically even as believers, all right? And we're going to be dealing with rebuilding parents, children bridges, right? And before we do that, by the grace of God, uh, we let, we're going to let us know because we have the phone numbers right there on the Facebook platform where we can call. Basically, we'll be taking questions and also contributions as regards 
this topic today uh, so that we can all benefit and see how this generational gap affects both parents and children and basically what are the causes and how the bridging of this gap can be rebuilt all right i pray that as we do this the lord will bless us in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah amen praise the lord our bible passage today will be taken from ephesians 6 1 to 4 children obey your parents and the lord for this is right honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. so um this message couldn't have been any more timely um, I don't know if some of us have heard about the prominent um, singer and what happened with his son and it went viral. So the introduction to this message says that building parents' children's bridges can be an uphill task. It's obvious that there's a generational gap between parents and their children. When we compare two generations and there's a considerable difference in the lifestyle, habits, likes, dislikes, of the people belonging to these separate times, problems due to age gap arise. It's no secret these days that these gaps are widening in weeds and bounds. There's lack of understanding of social, moral, political, music, musical, fashion, religious opinion that lead to a lack of acceptance, which is the primary reasons why families break. So I pray that tonight that the Lord will teach us by himself how to tackle this problem in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, while we still wait for a lot of people to join in, uh, the numbers will be displayed on the screen. All right. We have the numbers that is displayed, the lifelines. Uh, basically, we're going to let us know when we're going to be calling these numbers so that we can suggest... And basically, we can also uh, speak, uh, contribute to this very topic today. And I believe that the Lord God Almighty will talk to us powerfully, all right? And basically, this affects our generations. And we're going to see how the Lord God Almighty will take us through this topic today, okay? Uh, the thing I want us to look at, the outlines for today, we have two outlines, all right? Like, for those who are just joining, I want to encourage you to like and share the page, all right? So that a lot of people can also join, so that they can contribute and we can see uh, how we can help our generations, or basically the knowledge we're going to gain from this. It says, rebuilding parents and children's bridges, all right? Now, we have basically two outlines here, and... One of the outline is causes of relational gap between parents and children. Causes of relational gap between parents and children. And the second one is bridging the gap. All right. Now, uh, when you look at Colossians 3 verse 21, Colossians 3 verse 21 says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. They might grow stubborn and become rebellious all right so basically when you look at this text here yes, say fathers provoke not your children so the first question that will come to our minds are how can father actually provoke their children since the father is the head of the house and is kind of an authority does authority provoke their subordinate or does a king provoke his servants these are little things we're going to be looking at today so this provocation basically like i said can be as a result of words or by unjust and unreasonable commands or reproachful language you know again preferring one another in families you know what that means you know liking one child over the other because of character wise and things like that i'm going to share some story with us that will make us laugh basically but again it's going to teach us a lot of things today. Uh, I just want to read another scripture in Genesis 18 verse 19, and I believe that this is also going to help us. Like I said, if you have your questions, please, uh, 
if you have questions, please, I will enjoin us to kindly, you can type it on the screen or basically you can call the lifeline, all right? And we're going to get through, all right? So, uh, amen. amen. Now, what we're looking at here, basically, again, like I said, I just want to read the scripture in Genesis 18, verse 19. And the scripture says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. And this is very key. All right. Again, when you look at that memory verse, he said, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up and nurture and admonish admonition of the Lord in Ephesians 6 verse 4. That is instructing them in the knowledge of divine things, setting them good example, and taking care to prevent their falling into bad company. And also basically praying with them. We can see that in Proverbs 22 verse 6. It says train the child in the way it should grow. So that when that happens, he will not depart from it. All right. So like we said, we can also, when we talk about generational gap, we can say it's a perceived gap or it's an institutional age segregation. So this can happen in our workplaces, workforce, activities, global networking, and so forth. And so on, All right? Now, uh, basically, I'm going to share one story that is going to make us laugh before we look at causes of relational gap between parents and children. You know, I remember back then when we were very little, you know, our parents, I was watching, uh, it's like a comedy anyway, you know, between two parents of different uh, background and cultural background or basically race and things like that. So, uh, one of the child was going to school and he was crying, you know, like talking to the mom and all that. As while she was crying, you know, she was telling the mom, you know, mom, I don't love you, this, A, B, and things like that. And the mother told him, don't say things like that. I love you. And, you know, later they hugged themselves and they were very, very happy, all right. But there was another family that was standing close, a mother and a child. And you know what it means, basically, the mother started beating the child. He said, you know the reason why I'm beating you? I'm beating you because I don't want you to even concede such an idea. So for something that he doesn't even know anything about, that he hasn't done, he has started beating the child already, which was quite funny and amazing. Basically, that's exactly what we see in our society today. You know, so our parents, they beat you in advance for a sin that you've not committed so that you will not even try it. All right, so the question is, are these actually right? You know, again, I remember when I was quite small, you know, or younger, uh, while we'll be sleeping, whenever I see my mom walking in the morning at 5 a.m., you know, I know that something fishy is going to happen. So she usually puts the cane behind her back, you know. And once she's doing that, there is no way you can sleep because anything can happen at that point in time. But this is how we were raised and things like that. All right, so... And so um, this reminds me of a story. So we had these um, friends that came from um, abroad. So they stayed with us for a while. When they are upset with their parents, they talk to the parents and they like express themselves any way they want to. And I was watching this family and I saw that when they are upset, they tell their mom, mommy, I'm upset with you. You did this, you did this, you did that. And so one day my mom upset me. <laughs> They do that in public. I didn't even wait to do that in public. I waited for her to enter her bedroom and I went to her. I didn't shout to those ones who be shouting when they are saying it. I just said to her, Mommy, I want to talk to you. I don't like before I even before I even finished what I was saying. <laughs> a, a brain resetting slap had landed on my face and that stopped the conversation right there. And that was the last time. <laughs> anything like that happen. So we um, were about to understand why things like that happen and when it happens, what we can do about things like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. It's an amazing one. Uh, these are part of the things that we actually go through. Okay. So I still want to encourage us. Let's like and share. We will soon open the floor for us to ask some questions. Now, let's look at causes of relational gap between parents and children. All right. Uh, one of the ones I want us, we're going to be talking about, which I want us to write down is immigrant parents and their children. 
that has to do with cultural background. So the cultural background that a child has going to a place with a different cultural background that may affect the life of that child. And again, you have families who travel abroad, they leave their children back home for someone or whosoever to raise their children. And basically we can see those gaps happening between uh, parents and children. Now, one of them that we have here from the outline is generational generation gap which means all human beings born and living around the same time, also known as covers. And when there is significant gap of time among two covers, it is defined as generation gap. So a generation gap or generational gap is a difference of opinions between one generation and another regarding beliefs, politics, and values. That we can also see in First Kings 12, 3 to 10. So they had uh, an information yeah, to be reflected to the people. They went to the elders, but they couldn't get what they wanted. And he yeah. was instructed that you need to speak to the younger ones so that there can be a relation between this generation and exactly what is happening in this dispensation here. And the next one basically is culture shift. Culture shift, which is modification of a way of life through innovation invention, discovery, or contact with other societies. It derives from the experience of encountering new ways of doing things that challenge the basic belief that your way of doing things is the correct way. All right, do you have any contribution? So um, I saw this story about uh, a mom that was cautioning the son and asking him, why are you playing Xbox all day long? And can't you get a job and everything? And this boy said to his mom, this is actually a job. And the mom couldn't just understand what he was talking about. What do you mean is a job? What happened to doctors and lawyers and engineers? What do you mean sitting around and playing game all days of your life is a job? So she came from another generation where <laughs> sitting down and playing game is actually a waste of time and a waste of your life. And she eventually um, confiscated the, the boy's game, even though the boy told him he had a tournament that night. He, he took the game from her. But we're going to see later what turned out in this, how the story turned out. Amen. All right. Another one causes of relational gap between parents and children. We talk about uh, need for space, basically, need for space. This is one of another cause. He said parents feel protective about their children and they feel like to be involved and be informed about things that are happening in their children's life. But the younger generation feels a need for space as they are discovering and experimenting with the new things. All right, so the question is, like I said before, I just want us to put our suggestions and our contributions down so that when we call on the lifeline or basically when we have the contribution on the uh, chat comment box, then we can relate that to those who are watching, all right? Uh, it's a need for space. Basically, they need that space. You know, but again, is it advisable and from what context are we talking about that space that we give our children to do some certain things like, uh, I remember my wife told me something, he said there was a child who was having some uh, pornographic uh, conversations with their friends and all that and um, the mother went through the phone like, just let me go through the phone of my daughter. Spontaneous. Yeah, like spontaneous. She was, sitting, yeah. she was sitting with the phone in the kitchen. The daughter wasn't there, and lots of messages were coming in. And she's like, and um, the Who will send how many messages to you at this time? And she picked up the phone and saw over 800 messages, and she decided to open the phone. And she was shocked at what she saw. So, what is space? What is the limit of the space? And exactly, yeah. You know? Yeah, so like she said, what's the space, and what is the limit of the space? And again, we look at. Number four, he said, thought flow differences. Thought flow differences. That is, parents' morals and views of life can be very different from their children. This can lead to either imposition of ideas, decision, or friction, resistance on the part of the children. So most of this can be unrealistic. You know, basically like, uh, I am this, I want you to be this. You don't have a life as a son. So this is who I am, this is what you will be. Or basically, this is how you must dress, all right? This is the kind of things you must do, the kind of food you must eat. You know, these things affect, uh, you know, the kind of bridges between uh, parents and children. So the thought flow difference is really a big one on realistic expectations from 
uh, appearance most of the time, you know, comparisons and all those kind of things. Uh, you know, I remember when we were younger, my father used to tell me that when he was in school, they usually take the first position, but they have never showed us the result one day. You know, every parent in the world, they always say we were doing good in school, but they never showed us the result so that we can see and believe that what they are saying is true or right. They say these things and they try to impose some certain things or not. We want you to be a doctor. We want you to be this. I have a reason. I am this. I couldn't achieve this. So you must achieve this, you know, and things like that. Do you have any contribution? Yeah, and um, it may actually, in their opinion or in their own view, it may actually make a lot of sense to them because... I remember one time growing up again, it's my, with my mom again. So I'm the first child and she was, she did, at that time I didn't understand what she was doing. But whenever my younger ones do something wrong, she blames me for it. Like, so I, I was young, I was less than 13, so I didn't, I didn't understand what she was doing. And at a point I started to think, is she even my mom? Did she even give birth to me? Why would somebody else do something and she would blame me for it? But growing up now, I understand what she was trying to do then. And something actually happened along the way that was going to cause the drift. But I don't even know how she handled it. I was just thinking about it today. So one of those days, my younger ones have, one of them have done something and she started to blame me for it again. Didn't you see what they did? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? And I asked her mom, are you sure you gave birth to me? Are you sure I was not adopted? I, didn't, I was hurt and I didn't know the, the um, impact my words were going to have until I went to school and came back and my father asked me, what did you say to your mom? And I think from then on things changed and that's where bridging the gap comes in. So I think from then she tried to do things different or at least explain what she was trying to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. All right. The last one before we begin to take the calls, he said little or no attention or support. That means the busy schedule of many parents as a result of their career or other engagements. So has suffered the relationship they have with their children. Children from such homes usually suffer from lack of attention, emotional, and psychological support. You know, basically, and this is what we tell our children, uh, we need to walk so that we can take care of you, all right? And in the line of trying to be busy and taking care of the children, you are exposing the children to dangers and to a lot of things, all right? It is good to be rich. It is good to take care of our children. But again, most of the busy schedule, we must try as much as possible to create that environment, that relationship between children and parents, all right? Now, the lifeline now will be open, all right? The lifeline is going to be open. We have the numbers right there, all right? If you look at the screen, we have the number 052-248-5976, and we have 0566-558-738, all right? Now, you can call the numbers for if you have any contributions or basically suggestion, or if you can call, you can send a WhatsApp message. We are looking at causes of relational gap between parents and children. Like we said, we're talking about immigrant parents and their children, schooling abroad, you know, change of environment, change of culture. This can also affect our children, right? Culture shift, modification of the way of life through innovation, invention, like we can see today, men want to become women, you know, a lot of things are just happening around us, you know, children want to change the kind of life they live because of the jet age that we are now, and we also have the thought flow differences about parents' morals and view of life, it's different from this generation today, alright, the parents want us to do it that way, so they don't want to grow with the internet age, or basically the, 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 the the age that we are now. So they still want us to operate from the uh, old generation. Then little or no attention, like we said, and support to the children, you know, talking to them psychologically, know what they're going through, expectations, their schooling, their friends, what kind of friends are they keeping, what kind of relationship, what kind of chat are they having, and things like that. So the line is open right now. You can call. We'll take your questions. We'll take your suggestions. So what do we think at this point? Amen. Okay, so that's, um, that's where bridging the gap 
comes in. So bridging the gap will meant every every um, every wall that was going to break down because the family, believe it or not, is the most important unit of a society. When there's a breakdown in the family, there's a breakdown in the community. So how do we bridge these gaps? Like I said before, when I had that um, issues, uh, issue with my mom, I didn't understand what she was trying to do, but now I'm a mother myself. I, understand, I, I now understand that she was trying to make me responsible. But then I didn't get what she was doing until that confrontation happened. And that caused her to take a step back. And then she started to communicate with me. So first, the first thing that can bridge that gap is communication. When you explain to your children why you're actually doing what you do, I, now I understand. So I try to do that with my children as well. When I, even though I punish them, I tell them this is the reason why. I pun I'm punishing you, or if I take something from them, I tell them this is the reason, so that they know why I'm doing what I do. Even when I tell the, uh, the older ones, these are your younger ones, you need to take care of them. So they know the reason, and it's not because why is mommy just behaving like that, you know? There is a story I heard about a girl, well, it's her, um, a true life story from her. She said one of the most important things that her mother did for her was telling her that if she ever ran into any form of trouble, be it drugs, be it men, whatever it is that she runs into, that she can come to her and no questions asked, her mother will fix the problem without even asking her any question. She said that singular act kept her from trouble. Like when she thinks about it that, okay, why would mommy tell me something like this? Okay, I better not get into trouble. And then when she finally did, she called her mom and her mom truly went there, rescued her from the troubles no questions asked, didn't ask her why, didn't, you know, and that was the first and last time she got into trouble. So I believe that keeping the line of communication open between our children will help bridge some of these gaps that we're talking about. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And again, uh, listening and understanding is very key. You know, most of us, we don't listen to our kids even when they try to pass an information to us or when they try to say some certain things to us, you know. I remember sometime my little daughter, something happened when we were not home and she was trying to pass an information to us. And one of them was trying to shut her down, but we said, no, say what you want to say. So sometimes we may look at our children very younger or they might not be of age, but again, there are some informations that they have. So we must learn to listen to them and understand the dimension where they are coming from before taking judgment or imposing our morals and our ideas on our children it is very very key so like i said before from the beginning you know uh, a mother saw a child you know misbehaving started beating his child in advance just to correct the child and the child kept asking the mother what did i do he said no uh, i just want to beat you because i know you are already thinking of that you're going to do it so let me beat you in advance so that you won't do it right which is quite Amazing. And again, I have another story I'll tell us while we are still waiting for the life course and also we're waiting for contributions also. Uh, there was a child, you know, usually when we were younger, our parents would tell us when you go to your neighbor's houses, don't eat anything, you know, don't eat whatever they give to you. And when this guy, he got to his neighbor's house and things like that, and they saw the food, the smell and aroma, even when the mother was trying to bend the face, the guy didn't want to see that at all, you know. So he ate the food. When he got home, he knew that the mother is going to kill him. So he brought the cane by itself and gave it to the mother. He said, the die should be die. He said, what is life to that food that was so sweet and things like that. But if things are well explained and we listen to our kids, believe me, I believe there will be cordial relationship. Yeah, because you know. um, Proverbs 25 verse 11 says that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and in, of gold in pictures of silver. So when we speak to our children with respect, when we, when we try to understand where they are coming from, because there are lots of things that they go through in this generation that we didn't go through in our generation. So when we try to listen to them, to actually keep that channel open, then we were able to catch anything. Uh, on time, you know, if, they are, if there's any way they are going wrong, we're able to catch it on time. You know, when we're growing up, I used to think my mom was a spirit or something. You can't do anything wrong, she will catch you. Like, she just sneaks up on you and she just sees or hears whatever it is that you're doing. 
So even as, as much as we're going to be parents to our children, we should always try to listen to them in what they are saying. You can pick one or two things or you're, you can actually know what's going on or what's bothering them. As we're in a place, uh, some parents are in, in places where there's a cultural shift, you don't know when your child begins to feel intimidated or bullied by others if you don't speak to them, if you don't listen to them. So this is very, very, very important and crucial. Amen. Uh, we're still waiting for the callers. If you want to call to contribute or you want to send your contribution to the comment section so that we can share your contributions. Uh, I know today we're going to be praying fervently for families and parents and children. And I believe that the hand of God is going to move upon our lives and our children like never before in the name of Jesus. It's children are heritage of the Lord. So it is our responsibility to take care of our children. It is our responsibility to love our children. It is our responsibility to guide our children. But this should not create a gap between parents and children. We must be open-minded. When parents open their hearts, they look at things with a new perspective. And this helped them understand why what is being said or actually said. And this is very important if they must understand their children's priorities. And basically, we speak about their habits and things like that. All right. So we're still waiting for contributions. We're waiting for your call. The lines are open. You have the numbers on the screen. All right. It's on the comment section. The numbers are there. We can call live. You're going to contribute live or you want to share your experience uh, between your parents and all that, you're very free to do so now. Hallelujah. All right. We're still looking at uh, bridging the gap. All right. Uh, we have a question here. A question is here. It says uh, how can we relate to our children to open up to to it's what to what is challenging them and um, able to open up to friends misleading them so a question is how are children able to relate how are we to relate to our children to open up to us with things that are affecting them basically or he also said uh, friend trying to mislead them that how can we actually do this all right like i said the lines are open you're free to call to share your contributions, your comments, all right, your suggestion, your question. It's really going to help a lot of families. It's really going to help a lot of parents who are watching right now. So uh, what do you think about this before we proceed? So it's um, still like what I said. Okay, we have a caller now. Just one minute. Can we take a caller, please? Okay, we lost the call. Uh, we lost. We just lost the call. Uh, we're still going to wait for the call. It's going to come. The lines are open. All right. You can continue so while we wait like, for the um, call. What I said, keeping the channel open for communication and actually listening to understand where our children are coming from. If there is a, a culture of communicating with your children, when something comes up, they can easily come to you. Like I said, at the age of 13, 14, I was thinking... Why is my mom treating me like this? And okay. Okay, so we have a caller now. Can you can you take that? Hello, good evening, sir. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, okay. So my question is good evening, pastors. It's been a wonderful service and a wonderful session. Yeah, good my question is um, how do you advise parents? To keep up with the jet age how do they cope um most especially for people who um are born let's say you have parents of the 30s or 40s and you have this keep coming up how do they flow how how do they keep up how do they keep up with them that's my question okay. thank how, you how do they keep up with the jet age all right thank you so much all right okay thank you very much we just had a caller he said how can parents keep up with the jet age so uh we have your contribution. Sorry, I'm kind of busy okay. with uh, the so, stuff that I'll um, contribute. Um, there's a, a parents have to first accept that they have lived in a different time than now. They have to like put in the effort to understand without, as in within reason, where their children are coming from. 
and they have to actually put in effort to know some of the things the children know to to so that they can communicate with them at their own level you know like i was talking about the mother that was asking the son why are you sitting down and playing game why you know a doctor or something get up from there and go and do something reasonable with your life the mother didn't actually know that there was something a, a career called uh, being a gamer so the boy was a gamer until the boy um, actually played the game and won and paid off the mother's debt and ESPN signed him up before she realized that, okay, there's something like this. So the parents shouldn't be, um, should I call it, uh, stuck up and unwilling to bend. You must, parents must be willing to bend to to catch up with their children. They must be willing to know some of the things the children know and willing to learn some of the things the children know as opposed to just sitting down uh, in their comfort zone and giving orders to a generation that don't even understand what you're saying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I, I'm going to, I have one here from a pastor. Uh, she said, sometimes parents speak with wisdom that their children have not long lived enough to experience, to understand. So basically what he's trying to say, uh, the right application of knowledge, which means we have to break down this knowledge for them to basically understand because uh, there is no use of having a wisdom that is not uh, having the knowledge in the wisdom or basically understanding what we are trying to say. All right. So even when we pass the information in wisdom, we must try to explain in detail to make them understand that this is the perspective in love, not because we want to subject them to the things of yeah, to subdue them or to make them feel, you know, like lesser than who they are or things like that, which most parents do. They are very insulted. I've seen parents, you know, telling his child, you're not going to be better, you know, that, you know, your behavior will make you useless. And these are words spoken that has power. So we must be very, very careful when we uh, talk to our children, basically uh, apply some knowledge to them. And again, he said, advise parents to keep up with the jet age. You know, basically nowadays there are internet restrictions which has to do with the parents' kids' mode. With this, we can able to track our children, which means we must accept our children being on internet. Like, if you look at the pandemic now, most of the lectures we do are on internet. Even in school, they use the computers. But again, in school, there are restrictions. There are sites you basically cannot go to. And I've seen my wife several times talking to my children, you know, telling them the dangers of going to this site, dangers of doing whatever you're doing, the dangers why I am restricting you to this particular stuff. So like she said, parents must be ready to blend, to bend. So there is a follow-up on these. We must know what our children are doing daily. We must keep asking them new inventions, new things, bring excitement to them so that they can open up to us. Because the truth is, if they don't open up to you, there is nothing you can do about that. Then again, we must teach them the right thing and trust our children enough. Because the truth is, I remember one time, I usually tell my wife, when my son says, Dad, I didn't do it. Believe me, he means it. So we must understand them to know when they are actually saying the truth and when they are mischievous. And that's why we are there to teach them the right thing. Believe me, if you teach your child the right thing to grow in the way of the Lord, then the work will be minimal. Again, they're going to mess up with friends. You know, a lot of friends trying peer pressure. I remember recently when a guy called my daughter names so we have to call my son you need to cut away from such a guy or you need to call him and tell him caution him he shouldn't do that to your sister and he did exactly and from then henceforth the guy never put up such behaviors again so we must learn to bend but again that doesn't mean we need to leave them there must be a follow-up and all that yeah within reason bend within reason see their perspective within yes reason all right. Uh, do we have uh, still more? We are still waiting for more callers and more contributions. We are still waiting for more caller and more contribution. Now, someone said a child going through molestation from outside but can't speak to parents due to fear of unknown. How can parents fish this out and save the child? 
Uh, this is a very, very good question, a big one. And we, we need contributions. If you want to call to contribute to this, it's very fine. He said a child going through molestation from outside but can't speak to parents due to fear of unknown. How can parents fish out this out and save the child? So we need contributions to this. And basically, what do you have to say to this one? Why I will uh, speak about it a little further. So... Um much as we want to be parents, we have to understand that we are not omnipotent. In other words, we have to soak our families in prayer. And when they are soaked in prayer, if there is any untoward thing, the Holy Spirit can reveal what's going on. That's on the spiritual aspect. Then also being watchful and being vigilant. Can, you can also see things when... when, when when there are changes going on, a parent can actually, an observant parent can actually perceive it. That's why we said that one of the things that caused this shift is um, parents that are busy due to jobs or careers or whatever it is. So if we are not too busy for our children, even when they don't want to say it, if you're observant, you can actually tell that there's something going on. A story was told about a young child, maybe four or I don't know, that was being molested at school. Of course, this child did not even know what was going on. But the mother knew when she was uh, giving the child a bath and talking to the child, the child spilled everything. So it also still boils down to communication and listening to actually hear, listening to hear, listening beyond what the child is telling you and being observant how, do you even know your child in the first place? Do you know when the moods change? Yeah. Do you know when they begin to you know, develop some habits or some character uh, uh, traits that you are never aware of? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Now, uh, there is a pastor also. Thank you, Pastor Loretta. It's nice having you tonight. Please. You said, and there are lessons we must teach our children. So they come home at the end of the night. Please, can you just throw a little more light on this? Uh, basically, if you want to call the live stream so that you can explain this, it will be very nice, or you can help explain this on the platform. You said, and there are lessons we must teach our children so they come home at the end of the night. If All I right. understand correctly, yes. I, I don't know. I think it has to do with the portion of the uh, Bible that says, teach a child the way to go. When they grow up, they will not, not depart. depart from it. I don't know if I'm correct. So, if we teach a child the way to go, even if anything is about to blow them out from that direction, at the end of the day, they are going to follow the path that you have taught them. All right. Now, there is another one here, basically. Okay. I Like the question that was asked about molestation, I remember one time where we usually fellowship, there was one of the workers who spoke to my daughter. You know, that's he likes her. So my daughter had to tell my wife that this is what this particular worker is saying. And we have to make sure we find out to warn the guy and make sure it doesn't happen. Repetition. Like she said, relationship and communication is very key. Like I also said, you must trust them enough. When they know you trust them, they will trust you. Trust me. And when you trust them, they trust you. They'll be able to communicate. Not when, like I said before, you are telling your mom that one of my friends is trying to do this and you are beating the child in advance. So the child will not even come back to you anymore. All right, so when you anticipate, you beat them in advance. When they see anything, you started reacting, shouting, hitting them, and banging things. They will not come to you. There must oh, be that tri trivializing. Yeah, what they trivialize say to as you. a like. What you, do you mean? You're exactly. Girl, so we must know. pay attention, watchful relationship and communication. Now, someone said, in an advanced countries, what other ways can we parents discipline their children who are aware that if their parents scold them thoroughly, the social welfare could come? to their aid and take uh, custody of them. Uh, basically, I like this one, but I'm not going to answer yet. I'm still waiting for people to call us and let's send our comments. Now, like my elder brother who lives in the States, all right, you know, he said something. He used to scold his children and he told them something. He said, see, listen, what you're doing is wrong and I'm going to scold you. Now, if you call the 911, they're going to lock your father in jail. And when they lock your father in jail, you're not going to see your father anymore. Is that what you want? And the children say, no, 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 Kalas, that's not what we want. But in the end, there was still a relationship. He was able to pass the message that he had to pass. You know, sometimes the Bible says we should 
spare the rod and spoil the child. All right. So sometimes we need to apply a little bit of pressure. Why you apply a little bit of pressure, you need to tell them why you do that, why you apply such pressure. But like I said before, if they love you enough and they trust you enough, it won't go as far as them calling the police from you. Because like I said, there was something we said in the beginning that has to do with provoking. When you provoke these children, basically, they can grow stubborn and rebellious. Especially when you discourage them in all things. They find out that you don't like them. They feel... There is nothing good they do. They do this, you scold them. So they don't find anything good about it. So it would be better they don't even have a parents or their parents being locked up in jail. But if there's a relationship, there is an understanding and God in the factor of it, basically when you spank them, they won't find anything bad about it. I will tell you, there was a day I had to apply a little bit of pressure all right, on my kids. I really had to do that because I have shouted. I, also, I almost lost my voice. I said, no, enough is enough of this. I just need to apply pressure for them to understand the reason why I'm doing this. And when I did that, do you know that the next day they had to write me love letters that they loved me so much. I'm the best daddy in the world. And I felt bad a little bit while I applied pressure, but again, I just had to do it. But that love is still there. Even yesterday, they still sent us love letters. We love you, parents. And like my wife, oh my God, she likes pressure. She can, you know, sometimes I even feel like, you know, but the love is still there. They know that it's for a good cause. All right. All right. So, uh, I don't know if we've answered the question or you want to say something about that, like talking about those living abroad, social custody and all that. Yeah, so um, far and above everything we've said, Christ has to be in the center as well. Because sometimes someone said something, when the devil tries you and can't get you, sometimes they try to get hold of your children. So you must make sure you immerse your children in prayers. Pray for them, speak over them, speak life into them, speak over their character, their everything about them so that the devil will not get you through your children. So you may have said, okay, all these things you're saying, I've done all that, but soak your children in prayer. Soak them in prayer so that the, it will be well with them. And also teach them the way of the Lord, like um, the, the contributor said, like teach them the way of the Lord so that when they grow up, they do not depart from it. Explain, 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 and do not get tired of explaining. I know sometimes it's tiring, but do not get tired of explaining to them what you're doing and explaining. They have to know where they are coming from, no matter where they are. They have to know where they are coming from, and we can't just behave anyhow because the people around us are behaving anyhow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there is something I just want to say to Ross uh, in number five. There he says, break through your imperfections and fears. Parents should realize that they are not perfect just as their children are not also perfect so let not your parenting be out of fear but in love if you do your parenting out of love believe me you will have a better children he said parents must model god's love with their words and action right so like i said before you cannot speak upon your child you know say negative things to them you are useless you are deeds you don't have brain you're brainless you begin to say those things to them. You understand what I mean? So they must understand that whatever you're doing, it's in love. I remember where I walk. I'm so strict with because I work in the institution. You know, the kids said one thing. Somebody they said, sir, we like you. So I was wondering, despite I was so harsh, I said, why? He said, because we know that you are telling us the truth, but we are just trying to be who we are. He said, but you know, these guys, they don't like us. They don't say anything to us because they just want us to be quiet. Not because actually they like us. So they must see, they must perceive it. Children are very smart. And again, like she said, we must teach them in the way of the Lord. Like our children, we give them Bible passages. I tell them, go read it and explain. Tell the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Because it is the Spirit of God that renews the mind of all. So no matter how strict you are, no matter how you apply pressure, trust me, a child that will, back, we, we, we will live a life of his own, we do. I have seen a, a, a friend of mine, the father is a pastor, and he was a courtist, alright, he didn't stop me, the guy was so strict, he usually lock him inside, preaches and all that, but did he change him? At the end of the day, the guy still became a courtist, and which was a kind of a, unbelievable and someone said beating a child and asking a child to do something without explaining is very wrong so yeah that's in line with what's been said yeah and he let's said reason, okay. let's reason 
that the best teaching approach to kids in life. Okay. Hallelujah. All Next right. reason that best teaching approach to kids is the life of the parents in the presence of the children. Yeah. What's your life in the presence of your children? Some people let their guards down in, in, at home. And outside, they are like, they are, <laughs> they let their guard down in the life of their, uh, uh, at home. But, but outside, they are the best things. So, it's, um, there's something my mother-in-law always says, angel in the street, devil at home. So, the life of the parents, according to this contributor, is the, uh, the life of the parents as, at home is as important, <laughs> is as important as, what you say to the children. How is your life? How is your life? Is as important as what you actually teach your children. How do you live your life? Do you teach them? Do, they, do, you, do, do you teach them by how you live? Do you say, do what I say, but don't do what I do? Some parents will smoke. Some parents will drink in front of the children. Some parents will even womanize, flirt in front of the children. And, ask, and, and do you expect to tell that child something and the child will listen to you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. While well, we're still waiting for callers, because we're going to be praying tonight, and I believe that the hand of God will rest upon our children. And again, the wisdom that we need, the Lord is going to release to every one of us mightily so that we will train our children in the way of the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. Like rebuilding the gap between parents and children involves doing what is needed to be done as parents by becoming a little more understanding and accepting what their children see as their world all right which is key there we are still waiting for contributions questions we have questions so many things we want to ask okay many things that we've gone through in our childhood do we have those questions i want us to pull those questions up quickly now the lifeline is open before we begin to pray because once we begin to pray the line will be closed all right so we still have a few more minutes for us to contribute, for us to ask questions, all right, before we begin to speak word and voice into God's word. Father, we give you all the praise. So we're still waiting wherever you are, all right? So what's the effect of allowing or tolerating these gaps? What's the effect of allowing these gaps to persist? All right, she's saying, what's the effect? These uh, generational gaps. Yeah, when we allow it to persist, basically, this gap, what happens? We still want contributors before we finally round up with this. So we're still waiting for more callers. All right. So this gap basically will put our children out there. It will expose them to the things of the world, basically. It will make them timid enough, even when they have some situations, they cannot relate to you. They will rather relate to their friends, and their friends will basically further disintegrate, damage whatever has been done before. All right. Because... Everyone want us to be, yeah, we are all peer pressure. Let's do this. Let's do this. Forget about our parents. So we must not allow this persist. All right. Now, in the absence of any form of other questions, uh, uh, we are still waiting for questions or contributions. The lifeline is open. We can still call for those who are just joining. We are looking at rebuilding parents and children bridges. One thing we must understand Children are the heritage of the Lord. We must give account of our children. We saw what happened to Eli. All right. So we know what generational consequences are. Whatsoever you do affect our children. So we must deeply look into it, you know, thoroughly and ensure that our duty is, is rightly done. All right. We have a caller now. Hallelujah. Hello? Good evening. Yes, good evening. <laughs> I was the first caller. Okay, so um, I'm calling Kimberly and Ma, you said something about space, about um, the limit to what space you can give a child, how close you can get, and how much space 
but you said you were trying to get back to that. So I want to know how much space should uh, well, I call it boundaries? To what extent can you get so close when you know what they are doing and when do you stop? When do you just let them be? Or do you let them be all the time or sometimes? That's my question. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so we can't let them be all the time. Imagine that parent that opened the child's phone and saw it's 800 pornographic pic uh, um, pictures on WhatsApp. Imagine that she let her be and she never even touched her phone. What would have happened to this child? So we must be on guard and know well what, what is excessive and what is not. For me personally, what I do is <laughs> all my, my children, they are connected to my phone and they know that. I don't, I don't, um, sometimes I let them do what they want to do, but I can see what they are doing. I can see what they are doing. And depending on what it is, I can call them and talk to them and tell them, okay, this, 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 and this is not good. And that, 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 that is not good. And for, for this reason, I'm, they're connected to my phone. Yes, we can give them space, but how much space is that space? And like I said, even with the space, there has to be communication and watching, watching these children, watching these children, sorry, watching these children to know what they're doing and what they're not because the days are evil. The days are evil. If you don't watch over your children, the world will help you watch over them. So we need to actually know what they are doing. Even though we're giving them space, even though we're allowing them to do their own things, within reason, we should also be aware of what they are doing and not totally just leave them to go. And you as a parent, you know your children. You know the amount of space to give them. You know the amount of, you know the things that you should do with them. You, your, the parent, you know. And the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit, sometimes I, I pray, I, I, like when, when I see some kind of things, I just leave them first and go to my room. <laughs> Holy Spirit, what am I going to do in this situation? Because I don't know what to do. So as humans, sometimes we do not know what to do. But like I've kept on saying, we have to war in prayer. Even what to do, we still have to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do in this situation? Because there's no one, one key fits all. There's no master key for every, every particular um, situation. So at the end of the day, you still need the guidance and direction of the God that created them to show you what to do with them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, there is a question that says, how can parents avoid shouting sometimes? So, right, uh, we're still expecting your calls. More callers, more contribution. He said, how can parents avoid shouting sometimes? The truth is, shout does not have a principle and limit as long as they are children. Except you're saying they should be an adult while they are children. It's something that is inevitable. But again, uh, like we said, relationship helps them to understand when we are serious and when you're joking. Because even sometimes when you tell a child, can you move, you know, you need to put it up a little bit, okay, for them to know that, yes, uh, it's not the usual joke or basically the usual relationship, you know. It has to be now and you need to do it and things like that. But again, that doesn't mean that shouting should become the baseline for training up a child. Like we said, relationship and communication usually helps. But again, children are children. They must climb the bed. They must climb the chest. They must break the knife. They must do something terrible. They are just children. They just want to explore. You know that. They want to play. You know, they must. I remember when I was small, I took a DVD. I took a spanner. I said, I want to start working on it. Very young. And my brother almost killed me brown new dvd i said i want to check how the video gets in and come out and i want to do it again and i ended up destroying the dvd and you know it's not going to be funny basically and all that so and that's uh, it um there's something that i've observed that could be more effective than shouting yes we do that we shout out of frustration but there's something that could be more effective than shouting when you make the child actually know that the consequence of what they are doing. Yeah. So one day my child, my daughter was jumping on the chair and usually I would tell her, will you stop that and get down from there? But you know what I told her? I told her these chairs have nails. If you jump on them and they break, the nail is going to give you a lifetime scar on your leg 
because it happened with my sister. Do you want that to happen? And she said, no. So if you want to keep jumping, keep jumping. Trust me, she didn't jump anymore. She came down. But sometimes with the children and with where we are, sometimes the more you shout, the more they do what they are doing. And sometimes the shouting is going to cause some untoward uh, um, reaction from your body, you know? So <laughs> we have to be wise at the end of the day. Yes, in rising BP. So we have to be wise at the end of the day. Exactly. So we're still waiting for more questions and more contributions. And even recently, like she said, I remember my children, they got me really upset. So the only way to just stop talking or basically avoid those shouting and things like that is to take, I just took all their games, phones and hid them. The next day they started writing love letters telling me how much they love me and all that. So basically we made them understand it's not saying you love me by mouth. You must express it, communicate it by what you do as a child. And they got a point, all right. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, somebody said, uh, shouting never solves anything, rather makes the parent look silly sometimes in front of the children. Just coming down first a lot, that's her experience. And basically, which is true, when you just keep yelling and shouting, you know, it won't make any meaning without a meaningful understanding. Like we say, you need to listen to them and basically see the perspective that is coming from. And that's why sometimes when I see my children jump from uh, bed to bed. I remember when I was very young, If for those who are very close to me, when you look at my jaw, I have a scar here. I and my brother at that time, we were doing WrestleMania. We were jumping from bed to bed and the guy told me to jump and when I jumped, he removed the bed and I landed with my jaw. I bled so badly but we thought we were playing. But after I had that experience, I never jumped. When I see jumping, I myself, we escape. So some of the things, they do it. There is nothing you can do. You know, but we just keep saying it to them, explaining the dangers ahead, what it may cause, what it will result to, and things like that. We've played a lot of danger, a lot of dangerous play in my home. Even now, I found out that those things I was doing when I was younger, now they are doing it. You know, we do WrestleMania. I used to break my brother's neck and hands, you know, trying to be like Hulk Hogan and those things like that, all right? So... The Lord will keep giving us the wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. More contributions. The lifeline is still open for another five minutes before we begin to pray. We'll be rounding up right now. Uh, somebody is trying to call. She says she missed the voice call. Let me try to see this. Let's just... Uh, one minute. Hallelujah. So... We're still waiting for caller. All right. We still need more contributions, please. All right. So that we can learn a lot from these. Okay. Uh, more contributions. The lifeline is still open in another five minutes. Let's contribute before we begin to pray for our children. Let's speak voice. We're going to speak voice into the life yes. of our children. It's very, very important. And I don't joke with it in the morning. I speak life upon my children. I speak those things that I want it to happen in their life. So even when they are doing things in the other way, I keep saying you are, that is not you. So what I want them to be, I speak it upon their life. Because power and life is in our tongue. So I, I decree it upon their life. This is what I want your life to be. When men are saying there is this, I am saying according to the word of God, this is what will happen to my children. All right. So no matter the age, no matter the internet age, no matter what it is, except God watcheth his city, the watchman watch in vain. And we must put our children into the hands of God. And the Lord God, with his guardian angel, will guide them even in our absence in the name of Jesus. Uh, we still have three more minutes. Uh, at 9.15, we'll be closing the lifeline. And we'll begin to pray wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Your children may be the kind of children you don't want. But tonight, the Lord is turning your children to be the best in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever society that they've joined, whatever peer pressure that is upon their life, tonight... It will break in the name of Jesus. The hand of God is going to be coming upon your children like never before. In the name of Jesus. Any child that has caused you to have blood pressure. By the power in the name of Jesus. There will be turned around in the life of your child. And there will be healing upon your life. In the name of Jesus. The glory of God is descending right now. There are a lot of decisions that parents they've taken. That has affected 
are children or basically lots of children all right when growing up this is the kind of man i want my child to get married to this is the kind of woman i want my child to get married to if you don't marry from my tribe that marriage will not be accepted you know these discrepancies have destroyed a lot of society and a lot of marriages today there are a lot of people who have said i want my daughter he must marry from my tribe and at the end of the day the marriage hits to the rock so what we are saying we must commit everything we do into the hands of god yes, and we must look at it with the eye of the spirit not the eye of tradition or basically the jet age we are right in today we must look at it with the eye of god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth so i am speaking upon the life of that child right now that has been a burden upon your life that child that you are saying i want to give that child away but the power in the name of jesus the hand of god is coming upon that child right now in the name of jesus any child that you are giving up on right now receive power wisdom to deal with that child and the hand of god is coming upon that child right now in the name of jesus every decision that parents they've made concerning your life every negative incantation things that they've spoken upon your life unknowingly that is affecting you today by the power in the name of jesus we destroy that covenant by the blood of jesus in the name of jesus christ of nazareth there are a lot of things parents they've spoken when you were growing your mother will say because you disobeyed me you will not find a life partner but our god is full of mercy and compassion i break that course by the power in the name of jesus now loose break in the name of jesus the spirit of god will come upon your mom and there'll be restitution there will be reversal of that word that was spoken against your life long time ago. By the power in the name of Jesus, you are set free in the name of Jesus. Some said, I carried you with my womb and you have done this to me. You will not hear the cry of a baby. By the power in the name of Jesus, because you have come to my Zion, I lose you from every cause and bondage. By the power in the name of Jesus, as you come to Mount Zion tonight, come into the King of Glory. I separate you from that cause and I lose that womb by the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A father said, You dishonor me because you have dishonored me. Your children will also dishonor you. And as you got married, you began to give birth to children, you realize your children were wayward. By the power in the name of Jesus, mercy will be exalted above judgment. Now, I break that curse. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive your freedom right now. In the name of Jesus. The Father said, I would rather die for you to excel because of what you did to me. And he did not reverse the course and the father is gone but by the authority of god upon our lives as the servant of god i set you free from that course and bondage by the power in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you are set free now loose from every power that is not of god upon your life in the name of jesus Makisata palida ibrando sita pakusataya melebrundo kupasuta he said I told you to do this but you refuse to follow this one let me see how both of you will get married Paliga Pukasata. the heart of kings is in the heart of God it directs it as easy as it directs the course of a stream I break loose that word right now I separate you from that course in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth from now on nothing will be difficult for you in the name of Jesus, pick a suta. You've been trying to get a job, but it's difficult. My leader, Brundo Kosata, Lega Sita, Pekusata, Mebrando Suta, Puka Sata. He said, Because my parents did not agree, you left your parents and went to marry on their behalf because you are in love. Call your parents and restitute so that you'll be set free in the name of Jesus. We cover all our children with the blood of Jesus. 
We cover all our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Let the hand of God rest upon our children like never before in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, we give you the praise and adoration. Except the Lord builds a city. Thank you, Jesus. The watchman watch about in vain. Amen. Ask the Lord to watch over your children. Amen. There are things that you cannot see. You are not present. There are things that you will not know. But the Spirit searches all things. And the Spirit reveals all things. I heard a story about a young man that said he was into rituals and his family didn't know because he was the most quiet out of all the children that his parents had. And they didn't know what he was doing. But in the point at the point of the, the uh, uh, initiation things began to happen because he had parents that were praying for him Thank and he Jesus. didn't go through with the initiation and uh, uh, he was delivered. Thank you, Let's Jesus. begin to pray that the Lord will watch over our children. The Lord we watch over our children. We are not in the name of Jesus. Father, watch over our children in the name of Jesus. Father, watch over our children in the name of Jesus. Father, watch over our children in the name of Jesus. Father, watch over our children in the name of Jesus. Watch over godly friends, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Godly friends, Kaposata, Legasuta, godly friends, oh God. Megasuta, godly friends upon our children. Pekasata. May the Brondo Puku Sata lay that suit a godly friend to God in the name of Jesus. People go to suit a lega sita Pico Soto. May the Brondo Pusata lega sita speak of the living God. Yes, Lord, the Lord gives it wisdom and he gives it yes, abundantly. Lord, he is the wisdom of the wise. Yes, Lord. Let's pray to the wisdom of the wise to increase our wisdom in dealing ah, with our wisdom, children. Ah, wisdom, oh God, in the in name, the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Wisdom, Lord, Let's God Almighty. Let's pray for wisdom, wisdom upon the Lord, children God Almighty. that they will wisdom, be wise. Lord, God Almighty. They will be wise beyond wisdom, their Lord, age. God Almighty. They will be wise beyond their age wisdom, Lord, and that they can attend any situation. Let's pray, oh Lord, that communication gaps will not be broken between us and our children. Let's pray that communication gaps will not be broken. That whenever communication shall not be broken in the name of Jesus. Communication shall not be broken in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, O Lord, for ourselves. Pray for yourself as a parent. Communication shall not be broken in the name of Jesus. Communication shall not be broken in the name of Jesus. That you do not let your guard down. That the way you behave in private, that the way you behave in public, that your private and public life will not be too entirely different. That you don't send the wrong message to your children. That you don't let your children be too entirely different. That you don't let your children be too entirely different. That you don't let your children be too entirely different. Every house that is going through turbulence, you're going to receive fresh fire upon the house now. Wherever you're watching from, every house that is undergoing turbulence, the fire of God is going to be descending upon the house. But the power in the name of Jesus, loose from every captivity of Satan, whatever that is causing divorce or about to divorce in that home, I pray for divine restoration now. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the Living God, have your way now. Pika Luda Suta, Lega Supa Kasata Ligede, Bruno Puku Sata. He said, God, why did I get married? It would have been better if I was single. But that was not the design of God. He said, a man will leave his father's house and cleave to his wife. By the power in the name of Jesus, every marriage that is undergoing turbulence, receive peace of God now. In the name of Jesus, Now, there is a family there that because of job, one of you don't have a job and it is affecting the home by the power in the name of Jesus God is settling that home now in the name of Jesus he said a man who finds a wife find that good thing and obtain a favor from God now the favor of God will rest upon your home now in the name of Jesus Pikasuta, that job will not separate that family in the name of Jesus Pakusataya Melibrando Sita Ikalibrando Sutaya Mekasida Brando Suka Yes, that home is giving you unrest. You are unable to sleep. But from now on, you will sleep like a baby. Like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said from now on, you will sleep like a baby. The peace of God will rest upon your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that you need to take care of your family. As a man, you will not be an infidel. The Lord is releasing upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. That job that you need to take care of your family. The Lord is releasing upon you. 
you right now in the name of Jesus. That job that you need as a wife to support your husband. That job God is releasing right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. In the spirit of the living God, we give you praise and adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Yes, Lord. The gift of the Lord make it rich and add fruitfulness. No yes. Fruitfulness. The fruit of the In the name of Jesus. Yes. Fruitfulness. I and the one that the Lord has Liga given to me signs and wonders. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your children. Your children will Speak fulfill divine purpose children. and destiny. Speak life over your children. In the children. name of Jesus, yes, be well the head and not the tail, they will honor the first and not the last. It shall be well with them well in the name of Jesus. The name of your Jesus. children, they will fulfill they divine will purpose. Right they will fulfill destiny. Whenever you yell, there will be of good news. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will lead them. The Holy Spirit will direct them. God will cut speak every life, unfriendly life, friend away from their lives. In the name of Jesus, you will not be disappointed upon your children. In the name of Jesus, your parents will not be disappointed about you. In the name of Jesus, your parents will not regret the day that you were born. In the name of Jesus, Paluda Sita, Lega Sita, Pakusataya. Provision, Lord God Almighty. Provision, Lord God Almighty. He said, There shall be provision. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, provision release now. Take it by the power in the name of Jesus. Provision in the name of Jesus. Pakusataya. The grace to wait. Take it now. You're waiting, waiting for your life partner. Release. Take now that grace to wait on the Lord because your life partner is coming. Pikasita, it's coming. Wait on the Lord, the grace. Father, I release upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Pukusutaya, that grace to wait on the Lord. It is coming right now. It is coming with speed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take it by the power in the name of Jesus. That grace, the life partner is coming right now in the name of Jesus. Wait on the Lord by the power in the name of Jesus. Now, anyone who is trusting God for a job, Oh, thank you, Spirit of the Living God. I said that job is locating you from tonight. Wherever you least expect help, I say that help is coming tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, there is no more delay. The Bible says, if only thou canst believe, all things shall be made possible. Someone is saying, oh, I've been praying for a job for a long time. In Genesis 18, 14, the Lord told Sarah, is there anything too hard for me to do? There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. By the power in the name of Jesus, receive your job in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, whatever you least expect help, that help is coming to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. That one who is trusting God for permit. By the power in the name of Jesus, that permit is released unto you now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That one whose mother is sick. Receive healing by the power in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Now, there are certain things our parents have done, but as you begin to pray, it will affect them. But we're going to pray that because of mercy, they shall not be judged. In the name of Jesus, instead, they will see the power of God and come to the knowledge of the truth. And that is God's purpose concerning our lives. Things are going to be happen because they're going to be released tonight. But your parents will not die. But they will experience God's power that will bring them to the knowledge of God. You will hear good news from home that will make you rejoice. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Pakusataya. Because of some selfish interests of some parents, they made a decree to their loved ones because of their selfish desire. Say, for God so loved the world he gave. Release your children now. But the power in the name of Jesus, I said, you're released. You're going to get a call that will change your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. We bless your holy name. There is that one who is trusting God for his family to join him. <laughs> it might look too late. In this pandemic, it's going to happen. But there is nothing too hard for God to do. It will come to reality in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
I said it will come to reality in the mighty name of Jesus. I said it will come to reality in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. God will perfect your jobs. There shall be promotion from today in the name of Jesus. Peace of God will rest upon your family, upon your children, upon all that you do. We cover our prayers with the blood of Jesus. We cover our lives with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Now, by the grace of God, Friday promised to be super awesome. God is going to teach us in a new dimension. We're going to understand what a true vision is and what is true blindness when we speak about spiritual things. All right. And again, the church will be coming live, you know, on site by the grace of God. Uh, on our platforms, we're going to be sending the location and it promised to be powerful and awesome. Invite your friends. Tell someone about it. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, every Sunday is our prayer meetings, all right? And every Monday is our Bible study. The next Bible study promised to be super awesome. And the Lord will bless you. And again, next week, we are doing voice into God's word. And the Lord said, teach the glory of the Lord. And you're going to see God's glory in a dimension you have never experienced before. So I want you to noise it aloud and the Lord will bless you. So don't forget, April 2nd, we are coming live, live, live to praise God like never before. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. All right. Thank you very much for watching. May God bless you all. Your marriage will be fruitful. Your life will be blessed in the name of Jesus. And our marriage will be fruitful. And every wisdom we need, the Lord will release upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Keep on swearing like an eagle, for the Lord will keep lifting you up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.